Uh, hi everybody, welcome back, happy new year. Uh, I think I've seen most of you, uh, but please come up and say hello if, uh, if you haven't already. Um, it's great to be back, uh, it's great to be back at training. Uh, we're really excited, uh, we got our cup out, hopefully you guys got some shots of that. Uh, we're gonna start defending that uh, today. So a bunch of young kids in camp, uh, and we're pretty excited about uh, the new year and, and uh, taking on another season and uh, trying to win another championship. So with that, have at it. What's the status of Clint at this point? Um, Clint has continued to make progress. Obviously, he's out there today. You guys can see him. Um, we've been pleased with his progress. His attitude has been awesome. He's worked really hard. Um, he, we asked him to do a period of work individually in the offseason, um, and he's now progressed to a point where he's able to rejoin the team on a regular basis. Um, you know, we still have some steps to, to get through, uh, but he's continued to progress. We're happy with his progress. We're happy with his attitude. We're happy with uh, how far we've come. Uh, and, you know, we're excited about what the future may hold. From a health standpoint, has he been cleared to, for full participation? Uh, we are only going to act with his health uh, first and foremost and most prominently in mind. Uh, he is healthy enough to train. Uh, that has been determined. Um, but as I said, we've still got some mileposts we've got to hit along the way as we continue to progress them. Uh, and I don't want to set any expectations because we either will hit them or we won't. There is no time. Uh, we're not uh, prepared to put any more uh, structure on it than that. But he has not been cleared to just full-on play game action yet. He's out here, so you know. As you guys know, we're not going to do anything that's not been medically deemed to be safe. Uh, so the doctors have said it's okay for him to train, um, and you know we're going to continue to check in with him as we progress him back. Uh, he's a veteran player; he hasn't played a competitive match in six months, um, and so there are real fitness concerns around uh, him getting back into form and sharpness and, and doing so in, in a healthy manner. So that's what we're going to be monitoring. Is there a reasonable expectation that he could come back in the beginning of the season, or is this kind of a longer term? We'll see where he's at and maybe later in the year. I think as a first step, we got to see how he does in preseason. Um, and, you know, we obviously have a number of games, number of mile posts kind of along the way as to when he, when or if he'll be able to participate in those games. And um, once we see how he does in those, then we'll, we'll figure out the regular season from there. So he might be able to play in some of the preseason games that you guys have? Yes, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, again, we're going to see how this is his first day of training. So we're going to see how this goes. And, and so far, so good. And, and uh, we're going to continue to hope he progresses. But uh, can't be complimentary enough about uh, how hard Clint has worked. It is not easy to take that kind of time off, um, given his experience, and, and to bounce back right away. So he's, he's been really positive and a really good influence in our locker room as well. So, Garth, just so I can capture this. So he's practicing. He gets done. He goes back to the medical for, to say, practice the next day. Or is it more of his... He's good How to practice. He He's good to practice every day. Every if, day. It, you okay. know, and, and we're monitoring. Literally, if, as you guys know, we have monitors on all these guys all the time. If we see something, or the doctors see something they don't like, then then we'll obviously we'll take a step back. But as of now, he will train every day. He will continue to work his way in. He'll continue to gain fitness. He'll continue, hopefully, to make progress toward being able to play in a game. Is that schedule? He's supposed to meet with the doctors monthly, weekly. That nope. just depends on his. No, health. no. He's to be clear. He he is clear to train. He will be out here every day unless we see something that we hope not to see uh, at which point then again and the doctor be clear it's not just us monitoring and the doctors are also monitoring them you know and they will alert us if they see something that they're not happy with or that they feel is is uh, a risk or a warning sign thank you hey Garth, uh, what uh, do you think Gonzalo brings to this uh, coaching staff I think Gonzalo's an awesome addition to our coaching staff. I think to have a Mexican international, former Mexican international on our staff is great. I think it's great not just for our first team, but for our academy, uh, for S2, and for our, our uh, position in the community. Um, we need to contribute, continue to attract young Latin players uh, into our team, into our player pipeline. I think Gonzalo is going to really help us with that. Uh, he's been a really positive influence. We've talked publicly about how he helped Christian Roldan. Um, and again, as we've turned the team over and gotten to a younger group, we have more guys out here that would need development and need day-to-day -day coaching. I think Gonzo's going to be great with that. In addition to that, Gonzo's got a very sharp tactical mind <clears throat> and I think uh, will replace some of the tactical acumen that maybe Ante Razov brought to the table last year. Let's do Tyrone Mears signing with Atlanta FC. Can you give us your thoughts on him leaving? And Tyrone was great for us. Um, you know, we had to part ways with a number of players that, that did really well for us, not just Tyrone, but uh, Freeberg and, and Valdez and even Chitz. Uh, and all those guys are, were great pros. Uh, we would not have won the title without any of those guys. We're very grateful for their contributions. Uh, Tyrone expressed a desire to stay in MLS, and we were able to work out a deal with Atlanta, and he's starting with them today. Garth, how do you view the spot that, that Tyrone vacated right there at right back? Is it, is it uh, Brad's spot right now to, to lose? How do you, how do you, how do you view 
be that. Going My understanding is Brad's getting used as a right back in national team camp right now. Uh, so, I mean, the biggest thing for Brad is to be healthy, uh, to be healthy, get healthy, and stay healthy. Um, and if he does, then obviously it's up to Coach Metzer where he wants to play him. Um, you know, I think we talked about in the offseason whether that's at right wing or right back. Um, again, those guys will make that determination. Um, we obviously have a good young player in O'Neill Fisher who's played right. in playoff games both the last year, two years for us, who is most naturally a right back. Uh, we have Henry Wingo who can be used as a right wing or a right back. And, you know, we have a number of guys in here trying out. A girl possibly could be used there as well. So that's what preseason is. We're going to look at a whole bunch of combinations and see what gives us the best team overall. Uh, continuing with the youth, uh, the younger player, how is the uh, academy related now to the first team? How is the process to bring an academy player to the well, if uh, one of the kids out here today was Azriel Gonzalez, who's uh, a member of our under-16 uh, academy team, you're going to see us for the first time take academy players with us to preseason. Uh, we have a number of S2 players out here, uh, Jordi Delem, Zach Mathers, uh, Nuhu Tolo. Uh, so, uh, you know, and to be clear, we expect Nuhu to be part of the first team. Uh, the other guys are, are, uh, are going to try out and compete for spots. Um, <clears throat> so. We're making visible progress. Last year we had one player from S2 come up, Oleg Sanderson. Unfortunately, had a season interrupted regularly by injury. Um, we now have three kids from S2 that are in the mix in terms of potentially making the Sounders for this year, and we have academy kids in addition to that. So, um, you guys have heard me talk about uh, you know bringing in kids. We we took the home state kids from outside of market. We went from three kids to ten kids. Um, we're now pushing some of those kids up into our player development pipeline. Is anything new last season? You guys partner. Partnered up with two clubs in Seattle, one in uh, Eastern Washington. Is anything new in terms of you? There are no new affiliates. Uh, we affiliate in Spokane. We affiliate in Yakima. We, we're partnered here with Seattle United and Pac Northwest and Eastside, three clubs in the Seattle area. Uh, we continue to be really excited about those partnerships. We think they're going to bear fruit, not just in terms of uh, you know uh, partnerships in terms of players, but in terms of coaching partnerships, um, where we're going to have player people on the ground. They're hopefully improving the instruction that the kids get in those areas and raising the overall level of soccer in Seattle, in, in the state of Washington, I should say. And as you guys know, we also have a couple of these out of state one in North Carolina, one in Bakersfield, California. Uh, so uh, again, it's, it's part of our project to continue to, to develop better players technically uh, and to continue to bring more players into Seattle because from a player development perspective, we're competing with LA and New York and some places that are much bigger than we are. Garth, you had, you had fairly significant roster flux right up until almost the first day of the season last year. How settled do you feel like your roster is now? Um, you know, I think we're getting there. You know, I want to be careful, too. One of the things when you bring in a bunch of young guys, you want to give them a chance. Uh, and you don't want to make decisions before you have to. Uh, so, uh, you know, we do have we have a lot of options. There's a couple different ways we can still build a roster. Um, I would say, I can't remember how many guys we have signed right now, but we have, I would say of the roster spots, north of 20 are settled. Um, you know, we expect to have something like 28 when it's all said and done. Um, so, uh, you know, but to be clear, we, you know, pretty much everybody who's in here is, is in here. You may see us still have one or two more signings, um, but for the most part, the guys that are going to compete for spots are out here. Um, to state the obvious, the DP spot is one that we've talked about. We may do something, we may not, um, and that'll be a matter of opportunity and, and Dempsey's progress and all the rest. Three DP spots. Uh, what's Nico's status right now? Uh, Ladero's excused absence today. Um, we expect him to join training on Friday. Uh, as you guys who followed our uh, saga of acquiring him last year, uh, he played basically straight through uh, the year without getting a break and played all the way into December. So he played about 18 months in a row, um, maybe even a little longer than that actually by the time he, he, that we shut him down. So he needed a break, uh, and we, we gave him a couple extra days to start the season. When you have new guys come in like Harry Ship and Will Bruin, what do you guys do to kind of help them adjust to you know, uprooting their family and uh, moving to a whole new city? And how do you think Harry and Will are adjusting to their new surroundings so far? They tell me they're happy. Uh, you know, I take them at their word. You know, we try to take them around Seattle and, and show them some of the sites and, and look, basic stuff like find apartments, find houses, find the grocery stores. Um, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's what you do in any business to just to try to make them feel comfortable. Both those kids are really hungry. Um, you know, again, we, we've, you guys have heard me talk about, you try to find uh, distressed assets and re rehabilitate them and those guys are using good values. And both Will and Harry are coming off down years. Uh, and we think they're kids that are both really talented that can really help our team. The roster got younger again this year? Or preseason you happy with where the average age is at or is that youth movement something that's still ongoing you know I think we're down to seven guys over 30 um, and so 
And, and don't be wrong, there's, there's nothing wrong with having players over 30. You need a couple of guys, veterans, to, to provide that kind of leadership. Um, so I think we're at a healthier number now overall. Um, I think at one point last year we were still at 13 uh, guys over 30. And um, look, one of the, the kind of untold stories of the playoffs is yeah, uh, you know, although we won the title, we were breaking down. Uh, we had two weeks off between the conference semifinal and the conference final. We had seven players injured uh, during the, that two weeks, and a credit to our medical staff and our sports performance staff that we were able to get those guys back. Uh, and then, fortunately for us, we had two weeks off again between the conference final and, and MLS Cup. Uh, and but for those breaks, I don't know that we would have fielded the team that we did. Um, and one of the areas we identified was maybe some players who could be a little bit more resilient. Uh, well, hopefully not, you know, dropping the, the very high standard of professionalism and, and technical excellence that was established by uh, Freeberg and Valdez and even Schitz and Mears in particular. Moving a little bit past the MLS, what are your thoughts behind the new way Conquer Ch Champions League is going to be set up? And conducted here on out. Yeah, for those who, who have kind of followed us to say this uh, pretty clearly, we are, we are by virtue of winning MLS Cup last year, we are going to be in the 2018 Champions League, uh, and we are going to play a home and away knockout match against an opponent to be determined in the last two weeks of February in 2018. So those are the facts. Um, honestly, Nico, we've had discussions about CONCACAF Champions League format for a decade. I mean, going back, uh, you know, through various iterations of the CONCACAF leadership, MLS leadership, U.S. soccer leadership, uh, and so you know, there's no format that's going to make everybody happy. Um, does this uh, is this it, look? It seems like a nice, uh, a good format to me. It's a little bit like commenting on the schedule. Uh, you know, it turns out you're going to play everybody in your conference a certain amount of times, and the teams in the other conference a certain amount of times. This format to me is as good as any other. Um, you know, I think that the, the bigger clubs, Mexico and, and the United States clubs in, in particular, wanted to limit the number of games but still have a meaningful competition where you played really high level teams. And I think by doing a home and away, and um, uh, you're going to get to, um, you know, playing against Mexican and American teams pretty quickly. And, you know, Central American soccer continues to improve. And I think you're going to get away from some of the minnows in, in the Caribbean and, and Central American. You're going to play the really strong Central American teams in addition to the Mexican teams. And so, look, I think it's going to be a very, very good test. I think it's going to be a very difficult tournament to win. Um, I think it makes sense from a fan perspective in that, um, you know, once we get into the normal cycle of things, you'll get a winner in December in MLS to play a competition in February in Champions League to then compete, hopefully at some point an MLS team wins it, hopefully we can win it 2018, and then you're playing in the Club World Cup that December. So it simplifies it dramatically. I think it helps fans follow the format, and I think it's a good idea going forward. Has it been mentioned that is there going to be like a gap year where like this year there will be no qualification for 2019, or has that been decided yet? Yeah, and, and, and it has, and I don't know what's been said publicly, so I'll leave that to CONCACAF and U.S. Soccer to, to sort out. But to, long story short, the 2019 tournament, so this does not impact us, to be clear, but the 2019 format will be some mix of the winners of 17 and 18. Um, and so yeah, to state the obvious again, you're, you're, right now you had four MLS qualifiers in the Canadian one. You guys can do the math. It's probably going to be two and two. Uh, from 17 and 18, but I'll, I'll leave it to those those folks to, to say it when they want to say it. Steph, the, uh, the success of Ladero Jamaica, for example, do you see that as a change in MLS where they're going to start going away from some of the EPL players that are further along their careers and going to the younger players, for example? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I, I think it represents a sea change for the league. I think it, it, it represents a change in ambition for the league. I think people uh, didn't think you could sign those players before. Uh, and I think now that we've proven that you can, uh, I certainly think people are, are happy with the level of play of Giovinco and Ladero and, and uh, are going to try to pursue players like that going forward. Steph got sent home from the U.S. national team camp with an, uh, with an ankle sprain. How is he coming along? Um, he's he's going to be out for a while. Um, he's going to be with us in our on our preseason trips. Um, you know, so he's he's at a point where he can he can be on the field. He's not just in the training room, um, but he's he's a ways away. Uh, we're talking multiple weeks away, uh, and uh, you know, in the meantime, it's a great opportunity for Tyler Miller to get ready and, and show us what he can do. I, you know, I, you never know with this stuff. I don't think so. I mean, again, the, the thing, the theme that I'll, I'll stress here too is, um, you know, honestly, do I think Steph can come back for season opener? I bet he can. Um, the question is, should he? Um, what we have to be mindful of is we just played a, a nearly 11 month season, um, and with some of these veteran guys that played a lot of games, um, 
to some degree, there is no reason to rush them back. We want What we want them to do is to be healthy and to be able to stay in the lineup once they get back in the lineup. And so we're going to be a little bit cautious with these types of things. Um, we're really high on Tyler. We think he's got a, a bright, bright future. And so I tell you, we, we feel comfortable you know, one way or the other. Um, obviously, Steph's a legend, and, and I'm still waiting for them to, to send me the trophy designs for that save because um, that was the greatest save I've ever seen in MLS Cup. And, and uh, you know, you know, Steph's our starter, to be clear. But, uh, you know, we're going to give him time to get back. Talked about Wingo a little bit, but what are your thoughts on your two Last new homegrowns? <clears throat> um, are these guys that you think can compete for MLS minutes, or is that kind of to be determined? Or just You know, homegrown players, man, they, they, these kids come right out of school with Shea and with Henry. Uh, we think they're talented. You know, that's why we signed them. Uh, and, you know, there are no expectations at all. Um, you know, you're going to see us again with, I think, we're going to, when all is said and done, probably six kids, at least six to eight kids, probably under the age of 21 on this team. Um, and with all those kids, you're going to get inconsistency and you're going to get um, unsettled positions. Um, and I think, you know, with any kid coming out of college, one of the biggest transitions is obviously speed of play, but then also where do they fit within our scheme and, and then what role can they adopt? And we know in, at first you're going to try to simplify for them, see if they progress, uh, and then open up and make it more complicated for them. But, but no expectations on those guys. You have a former U.S. Youth National Team player, Dolly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, what, do you, what is he here doing for you? What do you hope to see from him? Um, he's a really good athlete. Uh, as you said, he was highly, highly touted as a, as a U20. Uh, Chris Henderson and I both scouted us. We were working for different teams at the time, but um, we're both really excited about him. Uh, and uh, Kurt Schmidt reached out to uh, his agent, and, and he was uh, available at the end of the NASL season. He played pretty regularly down in Florida. Um, and he's a kid that, for one reason or another, has never has never caught on uh, on a, on a full time basis on an MLS level. And you know he's the quintessential uh, preseason camp invite. He's got a ton of talent. You can see the frame he's got. Um, he's got a good pedigree. Uh, we'll see how he does in camp. Garth, how do you sum summarize the last season, 2020? You know, I think uh, from July 31st on, we were the best team in the league. And uh, we averaged two points per game over uh, 20 games, uh, and that's not a that's not a hot streak. That's not going on a run. That that's a that's you know almost two thirds of a season, in fact, where we were the best team. Uh, I think we were tremendously resilient. Um, I think that Coach Schmetzer came in and, and brought a, a, a fresh voice, uh, and you know empowered the players. And uh, the players decided that uh, they were gonna they're gonna go try to win this thing. And, and we had a veteran group and. Um, they did it, and we're proud of them, and uh, we're proud of what we accomplished, uh, and proud to have, have brought that trophy and, that, and uh, the parade to Seattle. Uh, and we're going to go try to do it again.